Hello. Hello. Hi, Marlene. Hello. Hi. So nice to meet you, a fellow Canadian. Hi, of course. Where are you right now? Um, I'm Brussels, uh, based in Brussels, Belgium. In Belgium. Yeah. Okay. Well, hello, Lisa and Disha. Thank you for being uh, with us today. Uh, so, Lisa, you're in live from Belgium and Disha from India, correct? Yes, correct. Perfect. So Nandi's foundation was created in 1988 in India to enhance the quality of life of the marginalized and less privileged people by addressing concerns of hunger, quality education, drinking water, and livelihood opportunities. So far, Nandi has touched the lives of more than 6 million underserved population. It, have, it has won a Peace and Sport Awards and is, it is one of the field partner organization member of the Peacemaker Projects. Lisa, you're the sport director of Nandi. Could you tell us more about its mission? Sure, sure. Thank, thank you, uh, Marlene. So very, very simply put, um, we are on a sports for life mission at Nandi Foundation. So our sports program is part of an overall um, education program for girls in India. So this education program has been running now for over two decades, and it has helped more than 450,000 girls graduate um, from secondary school. So back in, in 2019, we, we decided at Nandi to add um, a sports element to this education program. And the, the idea is in addition to, you know, to the, the academics, to your maths and to your sciences and to your languages, that sport is a really critical element to education and girls' upbringing. So for and your... So Go ahead, go ahead, Marlene. In your experience, how can the sport-based programs foster gender equity? Yeah, so, so I think if, I'm sure we all agree here on the call that when you talk about gender equity in sports, you're talking about a lot more than just numbers, right? You could, some will say, okay, we have this many boys playing and now we have this many girls playing, so we've reached some sort of uh, gender equity. Um, which is so important, don't get me wrong, but I think, you know, gender equity in sport is so much more. It's a, it's a whole ecosystem, you know, that must be created to encourage girls to play sports and, and keep on their sports for life journey. So, so at Nandi, we, we take this very, you know, very seriously because if truly we want these girls to play sports all their life, we have to understand their unique needs. What are the unique needs in girls playing sports different from boys? And we really, we really need to support that. And, and one element of that we really believe is having more women role models. So having more women coaches, for instance, in the program. And well, so this is where we've, we've really also developed not only the girls in sports, but we're looking to create an ecosystem with women leaders as well. Disha, you're the coach of the Game Changers program. How can female coaches contribute to the empowering girls and women in India, and especially in rural areas? Right. I think um, just the fact that they are female, I think that makes a huge different difference in itself. So when um, female like girls of age 8, 9, 10, 11, or even older or younger than that, when they see a female coach on the field, that in itself is a huge motivation for them to play the sport. Because there are times like football is not a very popular sport in India, but it is definitely catching on. So if in men it's not that popular, like think about women, right? So there are times when women don't even know that this sport is an option for them, right? But when they see like a woman football coach, and I'm sure like the coach has played at certain level. So they feel that, oh, yes, I can do it too. So that in itself, like really encourages more numbers on the pitch. Um, so uh, so even when men are playing, and let's say like there, there's a mixture, like in grassroots football, let's say there are 
15 boys and let's say five girls on the field right so as soon as there's a women coach you will slowly see that the number of go- girls starts going up because they have that they share that comfort level uh, with the female coach besides that i think that in rural india because the uh, the mentality is such that there is more disparity between men and women so over there the comfort level when they see a woman around increases even more so for example i'll tell you i was taking one course in uh, gujarat and i noticed that you know in the schools over there like government schools there was too much um there was too much of a divide between boys and girls so all the boys were in one area and all the girls were in one side like there was not much mingling going on during the school even though it was a coed pro- it was a coed school so uh, if you look at this you it is more harder to find such a thing in a in the urban cities right it's a lot of mingling and you know like everyone's talking to everyone so keeping that in mind because the people are more conservative in rural areas i think they also feel more safe like as a parent a guardian as a relative that you know the girl is going out there and playing and training and they also feel more confident that um you know that if they see that there's a woman coach they see her as a role model and yes that if that she can do it maybe my girl can do this too so um i think it makes all the difference in the world so how can sport uh help strengthen the female leadership in india through sport right uh so uh, i would go back to a personal experience so when i started playing football i was in school and uh, i was not very good at studies okay and uh, but when i started playing football automatically because my confidence went up my self esteem went up also i had this thing in mind that if i have to play football i have to keep my grades up right so it, it got discipline in me it got it teach it taught me so many life skills that i don't think i've learned that in any other way in my life so and a similar thing i've seen with all girls or any any player like right any person who plays any sport in this world so it empowers you to a next level it teaches you life skills which is very hard to get from anything else um so i think this in itself will make women like who are attached to sports more confident people with uh, qualities uh, like leadership self esteem all of those things managing time multitasking um you know um leading from the top all of these things so this will translate into a uh, non field life as well so i'm sure they'll be able to take the lessons they have learned from the field and translate it uh, into their day to day lives of course i have a question now to both of you what is the thing you're the most proud since the beginning of your mission we can start with the uh, lisa sure <clears throat> Um for me the, it's it's a really easy answer to this question. Um I'm definitely most proud of the women that are leading our sports program. So for football we have these nine wonderful coaches that we've um trained to be football coaches and on top of that we have we have 7000 women who are driving our sports program on the ground with all of our girls. they are the ones you know i i really think of my role is is just supporting them they're the ones telling me you know how important sports are for girls um in in all of their villages they're the one telling me you know lisa let's do let's do more football let's do more cricket let's do more athletics they they're the ones pushing this sports program along it's almost like you know they didn't have it growing up they didn't have that opportunity to to excel and to grow in sports and they really want to make sure that these girls have it so for me that's the the thing that i'm definitely most proud about in our nandi sports program you've mentioned cricket football how many sports do you have in total represented in your programs or which ones are the most popular Yeah I I think if it was up for our girls we would be playing you know 100 different sports um with them but the our biggest programs for the moment are our athletics program so there actually is where we were first recognized by Peace and Sports back in 2019 
um, we received one of the awards for program of the year, and that was for our athletic program. And so that program has just grown and grown since receiving that award. And today we have 180,000 girls who, who go from a village athletics day to like a state, and then we had our nationals in March. So that's a big part of our program. And Disha also is a big part of, of the football program that, that we are running with our girls. And Disha, which one would be the, the example of the, the moment you're, or the action you're the most proud of or your best memory since you've been right. involved? Uh, right, so I think for me, um, it's a transition which I've seen in these coaches. So we have worked with these coaches so closely. It's almost been a year now. And I've seen them, like when I look at, when I think about it and think about how I met them on day one to what they are now, it's a huge transition. They have grown as a person. They have grown as on the field, as coaches, as players. Uh, they have grown in so many roles, the way they are managing their home, their, uh, you know, their lives. Uh, maybe just like, you know, they have become more health conscious, like small things, big things. But there's a huge change in all of these coaches. And I'm so very proud that I could play a small role in uh, getting this along. But I'm so happy that, um, you know, that Nandi has uh, done this project because this is truly developing women football in India. Congratulations. And Lisa, so from now, what are the perspectives and future evolutions for uh, Nandi Games Changers program? Yeah, so I think we, we named it um, our Game Changer program because as, as Coach Disha just mentioned, we really want to change, you know, the face of football, help to change the face of football in India when it comes to girls and women coaches. Um, but we know that's, that's not going to happen overnight, you know, that we are just kind of starting on this, this journey. If we really want to be Game Changers, we know we're invested in this for years to come. So the coaches who graduated from our program now are coming back into our program and are, they'll be our, our football coaches. Plus we're already working on our next cohort of women coaches in training in another location in India. So if it was up to us, I think we'd have one, you know, woman's football coach in each of the 6,000 villages that, that we work in. So that, that maybe could be our long-term goal. Wow, 6,000 villages. Wow. Yeah. So I'm not quite familiar with India, so I would assume it's you're present in every region, uh, national-wide, or you covered specific regions? How does it, uh, what is the implementation on a national level like? So if we talk about our, our whole sports program, we're in nine different states um, in India, really um, spread all over, all over the map. So you could just imagine kind of the diversity in the girls and the women that are part of our program. Um, you know, India, from one corner, from the north to the south, you're talking about very different culture when it comes to food, when it comes to dress, when it comes to traditions, you know? so. So sport is, is so beautiful to bring all these, this diversity, all these differences together. And this community is really connected to it. So, so it's, such a, it's such a really nice element of, of our sports program. Okay, amazing. Is there anything you'd like to, uh, to share? Other um, projects, memories, um, stories? Disha, would you like to go ahead? Oh, I have mine. Yeah, sure. sure. Uh, I would just like to add that, um, I mean, while we are developing these coaches, I just want to give a big shout out to our Nanikali girls who have uh -huh. really worked hard and, um, you know, they have uh, truly fallen in love with this game. So whenever I see them, I can see their passion, the way they play and the way they are developing on and off the field. So it's absolutely amazing uh, to see these girls. And we even have primary girls and secondary girls. That means, um, you know, girls starting from seven, eight years. And I'm sure like, like with the long-term vision, which we have for this program, when those seven, eight, go seven, eight year olds will become 13, 14, uh, we would have got really good, you know, women out there, like on and off the field. 
Yeah. Recognizing of the field educators and everybody because they're at the heart of the project and the impact they have on the beneficiaries on the children is so important and it can be in some cases life-changing for the for the children so i think it's always it, important uh, to reward and, so, and pay the attention yeah uh, lisa yeah i i think you know For me, one of the kind of beauties of our program is, you know, we had this national level athletics event in March in India, and we invited, you know, different different kind of supporters to our event, and, and I would watch them as, as they kind of entered the stadium where we were having their our athletics, and and what you saw, you know, for me, I think I take for granted working in the program for so long, but when I when I get their reaction. The fact that they walk into a stadium where not only are there hundreds of girls doing sports, but everything everything around them is is woman driven, right? So you're walking into a stadium and you're seeing women as starter officials. You're seeing women doing the timekeeping. You're seeing them doing the results, being in charge of nutrition, being in charge of hydration. It's just we have hundreds of women who 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 make this happen. You know, so I think for me, this is one of the beauties of our program is to see, you know, this combination of the girls enjoying sport and the women so enjoying it. All you could say is when you walk in is fun. You know, you can't, you, you look at the faces of the girls, you look at the faces of the women and they're enjoying themselves. And we all know how important fun is to sports. And sometimes that's forgotten in our, in our sports journey. So, so this is, I think, what's, what's so special about, about our program. Wow, and it's so impressive that it, it's reached this level of success. It makes me wonder, what were the most uh, challenging uh, barriers you had to overcome to uh, to make it so successful in the implementation of the programs? Should, shall I go ahead, Disha, or would you like to start? Yeah, yeah go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> I think, you know, for Disha and I starting our first Game Changer program, I think, you know, we didn't realize what it would be like to train a woman to be a coach who really had never been exposed to sports before. Um, it's, not, it's not like they've grown up watching football or they've grown up playing football and now they want to be a coach. They have this incredible motivation to be involved in our program, be coaches, but they're starting really at, at you know, level one. So, so it's, it's like, it's, it's explaining how to be physically active, you know, and how to move your body and how to make a pass also to our coaches. So this definitely was a challenge, but also I think Disha and I have learned a lot from this, you know, and starting our another cohort, you know, we, we understand this challenge well. And it's beautiful though, to see them grow as athletes and see them grow as coaches. It, it was such a nice journey. Of course, makes sense. Yeah, I, I mean, I completely agree with Lisa. For me as well, like being an instructor for the coaches, um, I mean, I'm going to specifically talk about the Game Changers initiative, but uh, this was my biggest challenge that I had to, uh, you know, I had to coach coaches to be coaches who have never played football in their life. So I always give this example, I think, and now I'm going to give it again, but... It's like uh, learning French and then teaching French at the same time. So it's really bizarre. But, uh, and, and I think it takes a huge lot of courage for our coaches to take on uh, this challenge. Uh, you know, that they're randomly sitting at home and they, go, they get a call that, you know, do you want to be a football coach? And the girl is thinking that I don't know how to play football. So, uh, <laughs> but still like, you know, going, uh, going and taking that up and... Um, Uh, uh, taking that challenge is uh, is huge and I always had to you know maintain that um, balance between teaching them as a player and then teaching them how to coach our Nani Kari girls so that was a huge challenge to you know go here and there but um, uh, they have really worked hard and uh, I'm really happy with where uh, we are right now in this program and Definitely, it's a great start, and we have a huge way ahead of us. But I think as a former athlete and Olympian, I, I believe that sometimes it's even more powerful 
when someone is going to be uh, going through the journey of learning the whole sport and how to coach, you really have to have this heart to give back and transmit this, edu this, this process to younger generations. And I truly believe that sometimes they make even better coach than um, former athletes, you know, could, could ever be, you know. So it's sometimes learning all about it and having the motivation and the drive to learn and share that with others sometimes can even lead to uh, more effective teaching, you know. Yeah, uh, Marlene, I, could, I can't agree with you more. I think that, that these women definitely don't ma lack motivation. This is like the strongest motivation I've seen anywhere. But also, you know so well how important it is to understand the girls that you're coaching, right? Yeah. This is, for me, sometimes I find that in sports, we, we overlook that critical critical part you know know your team know your girls know where they're coming from know their families know what their challenges are that's like half the battle you know of coaching and keeping the girls in sport you know and, and and playing to their potential so we're starting with those women who know that really well and the rest is the, like you say if the motivation is there the rest we can we can help them with of course. Well, thank you very much to both of you for this lovely chat, which is highlighting that sport can greatly contribute to women's empowerment. It can significantly reinforce their soft skills, boost their mental and physical health. Um, it was a great chat. Very nice to connect and hope we'll get to speak very soon. Thank you. So nice to meet you, Marlene. And we, we invite you to India, please, to come. I would love to. And, and then they can Please. football. <laughs> I can yeah, try so it as well. Yeah, so that nice would be wonderful. Fun. Very nice. Thank you. Bye, Disha. Bye, Marlene. Bye, Bye Disha. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.